الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة السلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam About a week ago, senior scholars in the United States distributed a communique, a guideline as to how we as Muslims in this country ought to address the issue of the LGBT community. There were four principal ideas that they wanted to impress upon us, and I will share that with you before I get into the broader aspects of my presentation today. The first of which is the fact that Islam has its own rules and regulations that say very specific things about sexual orientation and that those rules and regulations are under threat. <coughs> so this was their first message. The second was that uh, in dealing with someone with whom we have some disagreement or some idea that is at odds with our own, we ought not to neglect the decorum that Islam teaches us, the respect that we ought to confer upon anyone out there, and most importantly, the, re the importance of making the distinction between the act itself and the perpetrator. So in, is in Islam, we condemn the act. We do not condemn the perpetrator. And then there is the issue of the limits to political alliances. Our relationship with other minority communities became particularly important in the past four years, the four, past four or five years, shall we say, when Islam and Muslims in America were under siege. And the alliances that we, drew, that we developed with other communities included the LGBT, LGBT community, and uh, that required that we approach the whole idea of sexual orientation 
in a unique, subtle way. So those were three, I can't remember the fourth, perhaps it'll come back to me. Let's move on. This particular document was unsigned. I know from inside sources that some senior ulama and scholars were involved in drawing up this document. But it remained unsigned, so we don't really know who who's put out this document. And there's obviously a reason for them not putting their signature onto that document. In France, three weeks ago, actually during the khutbah of uh, Eid al-Adha, the Imam was, as was traditional, he gave a Juma khutbah, or, or the Eid khutbah, and uh, after the Eid khutbah, the masjid itself, as well as the Imam, were informed that his khutbah was not in keeping with the values of French society, and he was ultimately fired. On closer examination, it, it emerged that he didn't say anything that was directly offensive. What he did was, he cited some verses of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this and so on. Things that you and I are quite familiar with. What he was not very careful about was this sexual sensitivity of French society. Two other Imams were also fired because of the same reason. Not because the entire khutbah pivoted around the disparagement of the LGBT community, but because their khutbah included verses of the Quran in particular that, for example, said something about speaking directly to the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَسْتُنَّ كَأَحَدٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ النِّسَاءِ Oh, wives of the Prophet, you're not like, the wife, like other wives. And then it goes on to say that, uh, that you should stay in your home. Some of you are familiar with the verse. That particular verse was cited as an example of someone who is speaking against gender parity. So in this kind of toxic environment, it becomes very difficult for someone to openly declare that this is what you ought to do and this is what you not, ought not to do. So this unsigned document emerged within that light. Things have changed a lot. In these past four or five years, we don't know what is right and what is wrong. We don't know what is the truth and what is falsity. That which is false has become true. That which is true is in doubt. We have new terms that describe our new psychological, spiritual, and social condition. New words are being added to our dictionary. We now have news, but not just any news. It's called fake news. And if it has to do with medicine, then even doctors don't know if it is actually fake or not. That's the level of, of dishonesty, dishonesty and deceit that has taken grip of so many important as elements of our society, which is what makes life so intolerable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, and we are very much like other animals. But for the longest time, we've been trying to determine what is it that sets us apart from other animals. So if you went to an Islamic seminary like I did, some of you did, then you know that one of the first things you learn in Islamic philosophy is al-insanu haywanu natiq That a human being is peculiar in that he or she articulates, he can speak. Even that is in doubt today. Because we find that animals are equally adept 
at communicating, albeit without the vowels and the phrases and the conjunctions and the, co and the commas that we are familiar with, but they do communicate. So now we've come to realize, at least for today, that we are human in that we have beliefs, we have values, we have attitudes, and then we have actions. That which we believe in is deeply inserted into our bosoms, into our very being. Most important to us, perhaps, is Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is emphasized at every turn. We think that this belief in Allah serves to give us a place in Jannah. It certainly does that. It certainly does that. But more importantly, that belief system in a God or the non-existence of a God or the possible existence of a God determines your value system, that which you consider most precious, that which you're sometimes familiar with, sometimes you look at it, sometimes, most often you don't. But that's your value system. That you will be, let's, let's take a very good one. Most human beings find unpalatable to the extreme the whole idea of hypocrisy. That there should not be a, an incongruence between that which I say and that which I espouse. That is a value system. And when you have to undergo that for the first time, you undergo tremendous psychological and spiritual tension. It is because it's, it's, it's almost embedded within your being. And then outside of you, you have an attitude. How, what is your attitude towards someone who is hypo hypocritical? And how do you act towards that person? So these are the four pillars upon which we stand today as, as human beings. The challenge we face today is that the compass that leads us towards that which is right is in a state of spin. There is no true north anymore. There is no true north anymore. When we first moved out of Hyderabad or out of Karachi or Malaysia or wherever, then the first thing that was challenged was our action. And the last thing that undergoes a transformation is your belief. It always works from the outside to the inside. Always like that. With the examples I've cited to you about France and the ulama in this country, we have reached a point now where it's no longer just your actions or your attitude or your values, but right down to your core beliefs. The state will determine what you should believe in and what you should not believe in. And from that would emerge your value system your attitude towards people, towards your neighbors, towards your children, towards the world at large, and the way in which you act, act upon that. So these four key elements are under siege today, from the outside, inside. And we don't quite know how to address that. It is in this light that the ulama took upon themselves this massive responsibility of addressing this issue and reminding Muslims that perhaps the biggest sin in Islam is to make that which is categorically wrong right. That was the fourth one. To drink alcoholic beverages, certainly haram. To consider ap alcoholic beverages halal without even consuming a drop thereof is an act of kufr. Tahreem halal and tahleelul haram is one of the key elements that keep you Muslim. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking directly to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is as important to pay attention to the individual who is being addressed, the mukhatab, as it is to pay attention to the verse itself. So, Ya ayyuhan nabi, directly, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lima tuharrimu ma ahalla Allahu lak. Why do you make haram that which Allah has made halal? And, and conversely, obviously, why do you make haram that, that, why do you make halal that which is haram? One of the cardinal sins in Islam is to do that. We're being asked to do that. We're being asked to do that. We're no longer being asked to just tolerate and accept. We're being asked to just wipe out the computer knowledge that we have inside of us and to replace it with one that looks at the world through the perspective of Europe, of the modern world. And we do this hoping that the Quran and the Sunnah can help us. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Taraktu fikum ma intamassaktum bihi lan tadillu min ba'di. Kitab Allahi wa sunnati. I have left amongst you that two things. If you hold on to them, you will not go astray after me. The book of Allah and my sunnah. Here we are being indicted for citing the book of Allah. So we have to find a resting place. Sometimes when you're on this journey, you can't just forge ahead. You have to stop and breathe and, 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 and gain some solace and give your body some reprieve and then move on. And that is to be found in the Quran, particularly but not in the way that we approach it generally. In other words, there are multiple ways in which you approach the Quran. This day and age, we have to undertake an approach that is somewhat different. Inshallah, we hope to talk about that tonight. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله رغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن محمدا سيد الخلائق والبشر عباد الله اتقوا الله تعالى من سماع اللغو وفضل الخبر وانته عما نهاكم عنه وزجر واعلموا أن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بملائكته القدس وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من برية جنه وإنزه فقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد خصوصا منهم ذل الأصل العريق أبي بكر وعثمان وعلي وعمر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لا انفصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير برحمة Assalamu alaikum. There will be tahajjud this coming Sunday at 3 a.m. Tahajjud at 3 a.m. this coming Sunday. Um, and uh, brother... Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so 
few quick announcements. Uh, inshallah, there will be a Friday night lecture tonight at 8 p.m. And our speaker is going to be our own Imam Munir Fareed. The topic is going to be Quran as therapy. Uh, another important announcement is there will be no monthly dinner tomorrow. It will be rescheduled, and inshallah, more details will be shared. Uh, Tahajjud, as my brother said, Sunday morning, 3 a.m. And the uh, IAGD board meeting will be on Sunday, coming Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Everyone is welcome to join. Some of you join. We highly encourage that uh, community members should participate and uh, see what co what's going on. And the final announcement is from the weekend school, Saturday and Sunday school registration is open for the next academic year. And it's online right now, and there will be also an on-site registration on August 15th. August 15th, on-site, and online is open already. Jazakallah, assalamu alaikum.